What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Claudia Jordan. It's Monday, and we are back with another episode of Cocktails with the Queens. I'm back with my girls, and we have a lot to talk about, everything that's trending in the world of social media and on our timelines. And also, you want to stick around because we are shining a light on Breast Cancer Awareness Month with television personality and breast cancer survivor, Ananda Lewis. You want to stick around for that. Let me introduce my beautiful co-host, all beautiful in pink first. What's up, uh, Bivica A. Fox? Hey, pretty girl. You look cute. <laughs> hey there. Hey, Claudia. How are you? Awesome sauce. It's Monday. <laughs> you got a glow about you. Would you have a good weekend? I did. I, I really could... did. I mean, I wish I could say something else was causing it. <laughs> it was just a fun weekend, and I'm so happy to be home. Well, good. You look like you got a glow. And I, I, if I didn't know, but I think there was a special somebody in that life in that in the villa. Child, I wish they was laying right in there waiting for me after this show. It was really be <laughs> okay. popping on real Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, uh, she is taking a little slight break from the all white because she she just blessed us with a little touch of pink. Uh -huh. uh, lady in white, Lisa Ray. What's up, Lisa Ray? Oh, hello there. <laughs> How are you all the way from the Pink Valley? <laughs> okay. I think we are. We celebrate breast cancer, cancer so uh, you know, month. So I could not let the ladies down. I had to put my splash of pink on in there as well. Well, that's it looks a sharp hat, though. It oh, really God. is. It's fly. Thank that's you. That's sharp. I wish Thank I was a hat. I need to get into hats because they would take care of all my little leave out being so short. You know oh, what I'm saying? Like, you Claudia, do not start. You look fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> really? Push it back. Push it. Come on. Really, like, oh. Don't let them know your your weaknesses, girl. <laughs> oh, here comes. I already the did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and last but not least, and I got to hang with her in Vegas. And boy, do we have some stories for y'all. <laughs> Selena almost got into a fight. My girl, <laughs> Selena Johnson. What's up, girl? <laughs> that is not true. Claudia almost got into a fight. <laughs> no, no. Uh -oh. <laughs> that sounds more like it. Uh, I'm <laughs> Selena, Hello, what happened? What well, happened in Vegas? Well, it was the young ladies that um, you came with that, who are just darling ladies. I absolutely love them, Annie and Rada. They are just fantastic, beautiful ladies, very nice and sweet. Well, get and to the got, point. They had got into an <laughs> altercation, honey, with, with some of the people that were working backstage, and it just went left. I mean, it just went left. <laughs> and it just, so it was Claudia's friends that was acting ghetto is what you're saying. Well, they, they weren't acting ghetto. They were acting normal. But then the people, you know how. Oh, so they up. Go on. Now, now, walk with me. You know how when you might be dressed up, and you all can attest to this because you're very beautiful ladies. Oh. You know how when you're dressed up and you looking real sharp and you're real pretty and, you know, guys might be looking at you and you might, get, be, might be getting more attention. Other ladies might feel intimidated by that concept. And so they'll treat you a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the that kind of happened. You feel me? Haterade. And that kind of happened to Claudia and her friends. And, you know, I just got involved because they were with me and they were being rude while they were with me. And so that's Security when tried to kick my friend up the stage after Silk said that she could stand on the stage. So she tried to kick us out. And then we said, all right, we're going to take a picture. We're going to leave. We took a picture. Right. And the lady shut the lights off <laughs> in the whole hallway while we were taking a picture. <laughs> and Selena goes, what you not about to do? Is turn, what you going to turn the lights up in the whole city? So it got turned up. And um, yeah, then my friend thought Selena wasn't changing faces, and, which and I just I can't. When she clicked the light off, that that actually turned a light on in me. I was trying to be calm, but when she flicked that light, it it was yeah, I didn't know what else to do but cuss out. So then I just went wow. no because I felt like that was disrespectful and it was rude and petty and ignorant. And you work for the organization. I just got off this stage. I'm an entertainer. That's rude. So I, I shout know. out to that ghetto security guard lady. Her name was Ty. As soon as I find her last name, I'm putting it on my Instagram page. Anyways, oh, we had a fun God. time all in all. Well, let, me and say let, let me tell you this, Gloria, because what happens in Vegas supposed to stay in Vegas. <laughs> try, I'm trying. That. But when me and Viv went, we ain't had that. So maybe that's who y'all should have been with us. <laughs> <laughs> or what they should have did is hired the excellent security that we had when we were there. Yeah. Well, I have a security person, so she wasn't coming at me. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I had to come at her because she was being rude to Claudia's friends. And she I didn't was. Like, uh, my I didn't friends like were not ratchet. They were just having a good time. We had a we had we had a great fun. There were so many other things that happened. We'll have to fill y'all in later. But it was a lot of funny things that happened on that trip. So we yeah, all made it to Vegas. Hangover. 
It was, it was like the hangover. We need to do Vegas together, the four of us. Oh, wow. I agree. Agree. With, with y'all security. And we'll get the security and and, and our, our people. We, we have a company <laughs> that we use in Vegas that's very good, Nick at Night, okay? That's so right. Okay, come on, well, ladies, what y'all sipping on, ladies? I have my usual Pinot Noir in my Baccarat glass. Very nice. I got the L, but it's the T. A. Well, mm -hmm. I just have Malbec. Simply Lemonade and Tito's Vodka. I'm still like I'm in Vegas. <laughs> okay, okay. Only okay. the best. Cheers, ladies. Salute. Okay, y'all. Uh, Vivica, before we get started uh, on the on the show, our mm -hmm. girl, you, you showed up and showed up at the 2022 Wearable Art Gala over the weekend. How was that? That looks super fly. Yes. I got to go next oh, year. Oh, man. Wow. Okay. Um, Look at you. Ooh. Thank you, sweetheart. Strange, Ooh. strange. Huh? Yeah. Well, uh, the theme of the Waco Gala uh, was Harlem Nights. Uh, this is an event every year that Tina Lawson uh, does with her wonderful husband, Richard Lawson. And what I love about this event is that they support the arts from students um, uh, in art, uh, dancing. The performances were off the chain. Audra Day sang, uh, it was hosted by Kelly, 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 get the actress. Come on, y'all help me with so many names at night. You Kelly know, Clarkson. Kelly Ripple? No. Kelly Clarkson? No, uh, it's gonna get me. I'm gonna remember. Oh, no, Kiki, Kiki, that was it. Oh, Kiki, Kiki, Palmer. Kiki Palmer. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry, y'all. It was, I love her. I'm telling you, it was thick up in there. Star Jones uh, was, um, uh, do, do, you know, when they do the things for the au auctioneer, she was an mm -hmm. auctioneer. It was really a night of like girl power. The girl power was so incredible. Uh, you should have seen the way Kelly Rowland was dressed. Her mm -hmm. dress was beautiful. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. glad, honey, that, you know, the majority of them children up there was much younger than me, but they was like, let me give it to top dress Vivica Fox and Angela Bassett who was honored that evening as well, too. She looked amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that green dress she had on was fabulous. Yeah, she looked Tina amazing. looked great. The family was there. Beyonce, Jay-Z, uh, Blue Ivy, Blue Ivy, child bid $80,000 on, uh, I think, a pair of earrings. So it was just <laughs> a night. We raised close to $5 million for the Waco Theater, Waco, Waco Theater, and it was just a beautiful night. So that's why, you know, my, I still have this wonderful glow. Cause you know, sometimes you go to an event and you can't wait to get out of there. Yeah, I, I know. Sit down, y'all. So real quick about my dress. My dress is for the stars uh, by Jacob. Jacob did me literally from head to toe, the hat, the dress, the gloves. Um, this man is just amazing. He loves to see women and artists. He does a lot of international videos, uh, videos for rap stars. So, honey, it's all about that figure. And I thank Jacob for... Um, yeah, it's all about that body. Hey! That body, yaddy, 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 because girl, it, you know I was at the hot springs working out, girl, getting in that... Well, give a thank you. Get this. If you didn't have the body and the grace to be able to carry that, them young girls wouldn't have thought nothing. But yeah. they said what they said and they meant what they meant because they saw what they saw. Well... Okay, come on then. You... <laughs> You did that. So we want to give you your props and you were yes. looking real good. Okay. Well, I, I love it. I'm, that queen. I'm sure you're going to have a whole bunch of fellas in your DMs. Okay. Let us know if there's anybody juicy. She probably already do what right. told us. You know, she mm -hmm. probably told us, honey. The right. people already in the inbox. Okay. <laughs> I, I, you know I would let y'all know. They in the inbox well, trying to get in the inbox. That's worth something. <laughs> <laughs> well, soulmates, it is our Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so drop your pink emojis in the chat one time for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, Queens, uh, let's talk about the importance of this month, and has anyone close to you had to deal with this terrible disease? Anyone have any experience with breast cancer? Lisa Ray? I do. Um, a couple of my aunts, you know, some survived, some did not. Some was able to, you know, um, replace their breasts with an artificial uh, implant. Um, and I also used to be an ambassador of Susan G. Coleman. And every time they do the 5k walk, you know how the celebrities just cut the ribbon and they're like, you're off. I didn't want to be one of those kind. I actually wanted to be able to jog in it myself. So I trained for it. And that was my first 5k. And I will say the feeling that I got 
passing the finish line because I thought I saw several and I felt like, oh, I can stop. And he's like, no, 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 no. I was like, oh, okay. You know, and I had to really concentrate. But the feeling that I got that made me feel so good and accomplished made me feel like they had to feel 10 times that amount of um of, of good energy and mm -hmm. stuff. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And so um I was glad and proud to be a part of. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else? Vivica, Selena, yeah. anybody else in your family? Selena. Your sister, well, right? My sister is a breast cancer survivor, Celicia. She's also my manager. Shout out to her. And what was so, you know, um, impactful for me with, in, you know, in regards to her breast cancer is we had planned a tour to, um, in South Africa. And she had, she had been planning it for months and the week before it was time to go, she was diagnosed with type two blood, uh, type two breast cancer, and it was devastating. I had to go on that tour by myself. That was the first time going out of the country without her. Mm. Um, and she had planned the whole thing, so she had to stay behind to do the um, the uh, lumpec lump lumpectomy, I think it's mm -hmm. called, where they yeah. take the lump out. And you know, she did the radiation and all that stuff. So. Um, that was that was a big deal because we don't have it in our family. You know what I'm mm. saying? We're not predisposed. So it was extremely shocking. Mm. Um, and she still deals with the remnants of it. She's on tamoxifen um, because you have to be on a tamoxifen for five years. Now, maybe Ananda could touch more on this as well. But it was a big deal for us because it's not predisposed. So, right. you know, but she Ooh. is a breast cancer survivor. And she has yes. not gotten any signs of anything since then. And that was 2019. So we are happy to hear that. Thank, yes, praise, God. praise God. Yes, God. Vivica, mm -hmm. anybody in your family or media? Yeah, circle? well, uh, there was a good friend of mine uh, by the name of uh, Shelby that um, fought a very brave battle against breast cancer for years. Um, I'll never forget the one time I met her. Y'all remember the Grand Lux at the Beverly Center? Yes. And she broke the news to me. And I was like, you don't look like you're sick. And she took off her hat and she had lost all of her hair. She's like, I've been going through therapy. And um, then it went away. And unfortunately it came back. And when it came back, it came back strong. And I'll just never forget going to that funeral and see how brave her husband and her little girl was, um, you know, that they lost their, their, their mother and wife. So that was traumatic to go through. It really was. And that was like 15 years ago. Um, and then my good girlfriend, Vanessa Bell Calloway, um, she went, she went through the whole surgery and rebuilding and her spirit. I didn't even know, you know, she, she, she fought the battle in privacy till finally she knew that she was okay. And I noticed she had been quiet because Vanessa Bell Calloway always works. And, um, she broke it to us and she said, I didn't want any of you guys to feel sorry for me. I had my husband, I had my family and she's been in remission and she looks great and has been working ever since. So you never know it, it breast cancer f affects us all, but mainly African-American women from all walks of life. So I'm glad we're having a show like tonight. Absolutely. Thanks ladies for sharing. Um, I lost my, my grandmother in Italy, which I didn't really get to ever spend much time with her because I'd only see her like every three years, you know, when we would be able, be able to go to Italy and see them. And it was it was pretty bad for her. And um, I I really felt like I had it this year when I had my issues. I had a pain in my right breast for like a, a long time and I kept ignoring it because mm. I'm horrible with that kind of stuff. I'm a hypochondriac, but then I'm also a procrastinator when yeah. I feel like it's going to be bad news, which makes no sense, right? It makes no sense. But I was scared. And in my mind, I'm like, I know I have it. So I'm just going to delay finding out the bad news. And ladies, we have to go because... Black women with health care, they do not take us as serious. They will not do a follow-up. Why did I get a positive, a negative result? But no one said, hey, but we should probably check out why you've had pain. There's got to be some reason why you had pain for like a year. Like they don't care, you guys. We have to go the extra step. That's why the mortality rate uh, for black women is higher than white women because they give them more care. They give them more, they give them, pay them more attention. Oh, you're hurting? Let's run another test. With us, they don't do that. We have to be our biggest advocates, you know? And I wonder how many of our friends, our sisters, our mothers, our grandmothers, we could still have here on earth if there was more of a, a, a sense of urgency to, 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 to put Black women's health care uh, at a higher priority. So ladies, thank you so much. Go I wanted to share this too, because since we are in Breast Cancer Awareness Month, there's other things that need to be spoken about. Like there's a different, better test 
than a mammogram that we are supposed to be able to have as well. That's yep. more of a thorough type of exam. What test is that? I, 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 they I, give you an ultrasound and ultrasound. a mammogram. Ultrasound. Yeah, we'll find out. Because we should yeah. share that with other ladies, Lisa Ray. And yeah. I thought maybe, ultrasound, we definitely. Know, maybe we can ask Ananda. I, I'm not sure. Maybe I can look it up on our break. Yeah, uh, but you know, it, and it comes from women that are uh, go through menopause, uh, premenopausal, because we have to balance the estrogen against the testosterone. Yeah. And if you get too much estrogen, that's not good as well. And then you'll be susceptible to cancer. So there's mm -hmm. so many other ways that people are thinking, oh, just breast cancer this way. Uh, uh. There are so many other ways oh. that we need to educate ourselves about what breast cancer and how to to eliminate it and the process. I, 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 you know, from our family. Yeah. It could be the ESR test, um, Lisa Ray. Um, I know it detects like inflammation levels and the inflammation levels also can cause cancer if they're out of control. Mm -hmm. So, and these are, these are tests we don't, we don't, we have to ask for when you go to your physical, you have to ask for them. Like it's, it's very crazy. They don't just run them even no. though they should, but they don't, you have to ask for all these tests. You have to ask for vitamin D levels. You have to ask for all these things. It's really ridiculous. That's why this show is so important. And our guests, our special guests, is super important. Coming up next, we are talking to breast cancer survivor and queen, yes. Ananda Lewis. Stick around. We'll be right back. Talented Ananda Lewis. Now, we're talking about the importance of Breast Cancer Awareness Month and its impact on Black women. Once again, let's welcome the fantastic survivor, Ananda Lewis. Hey, girl. Yay! Yay! I love your show. I watch a lot and I thank you for how you represent us on TV. It's beautiful. You're welcome. We've, we've been wanting to have you on. And can you like tell us, like you're just not gonna age, you're gonna still look 25 for the rest of your <laughs> life, right? You're gonna keep looking 25. Yes. That's what we do. We should go have some lunch together. You get up here, you'd be like, oh, I see it. I see it. No, no, no I mean, not. Thank God I'm holding up good. I do a lot and of And I saw her at the airport about a month or so ago. And <laughs> honey, but first of all, I saw the ass. I know I that's right. right. What? And then you I thought the question, and then I heard the voice, which made me go, Ananda. And she turns around, she says, Lisa Ray. I said, I don't know <laughs> your old friend is like, hey, girl. So no, oh. she was just the same. Like, she, she ain't fine. got on here. Ananda, <laughs> Thanks, Ananda, one of those ladies that's going to be fine forever. Like, seriously, just fine. Mm -hmm. got secrets, though, that work. So we'll talk about that on the next show. Oh, yes, we will. <laughs> So Ananda, let's, let's get into it because, you know, the people in the chat are, first of all, everyone's excited. They're like, oh my God, I love her so Hi, much. Everybody. Like they are giving you so much love in the chat. Now in 2020, you shared with your social media followers that you had been battling stage three breast cancer for two years. And now yeah. tell us about your journey and why was it important for you to announce that and to make it public? And was that scary for you? Um, so my journey started January of 2019. and Really, it started before that because it, those of you who said you do have friends, family that have gone through breast cancer, if you're kind of in that fight with them intimately, you see that once they find out it's there, they're staged. Like you just said, I was stage three when I found out. So then it sounded like your sister was stage two. There are all these different stages. And basically all that means is how big is the tumor and how far has it gone in your body? Mine mm -hmm. was a stage three because although it started in my breast, it had gone to my lymph nodes already in my, under my armpit. And so they stage that once it gets out of the localized breast area, then your stages go up. If it had gone to my liver or my brain or my bones, which are very common spread areas, then it would be a four, right? We always hear, oh, they have stage four because that's what we're told. It means you're going to die soon because we can't do anything about stage four. So mine was found at stage three. I knew it prior because I felt my own lump. And Lisa Ray, you were talking before about the other tests. Thermography is the test that you were referring to. And that's the one where it's basically a heat sensing camera where it scans your body and based on the heat levels in the different areas of your body can tell you, okay, is there something going on here or not? Uh, inflammation gives off a lot of heat. Cancer is a further down the line uh, outcome of inflammation. And so it gives off a lot of heat too. Uh, and so that's how mine was found. Thermography and then, uh, well, I found it myself doing my breast exam every month in the shower, which I highly recommend to women because Claudia, you and I are the same in that I'm a bit of a hypochondriac, but also a doctor avoider. Yep. So I wasn't going and getting, doing what I needed to do. Um, at one point I didn't have insurance, which is another issue a lot of us face as black women. Our life gets a little rocky. And one of the first things to go is health insurance. So at the time I was gonna go get a, a mammogram, 
I didn't have any insurance. Mm -hmm. My mom had breast cancer um, and I walked her through hers and I knew my chances would be higher because my mother had it. I yeah. also knew I wasn't going to do the same thing that she chose to do. It's a very personal decision. I think the way I've chosen to handle it has scared people around me, but my success level has been amazing to me. I've gone from a three to a two. I got it out of my lymph node. It is still local, uh, localized in my breast, but a tumor in your breast won't kill you. Um, my goal is to keep it from going anywhere else, but I've also kind of rejected and said no to a lot of what conventional medicine told me I needed to do because I, I disagree and it's my body. So, wow. I, you know, first of all, I commend you for being a naturalist and taking matters into your own hands because a lot of times the doctors don't have all the answers mm -hmm. and and that's you know that's just something that we need to embrace yeah the doctors don't always have the answers medicine is a temporary or if not prolonged band-aid yep. basically um so mm -hmm. i commend you for that my my sister hers was set, it was stage two and mm -hmm. she did get the lumpectomy and mm -hmm. she is on the tamoxifen and she hates it Yep. She absolutely hates it. And she's actually weaning herself off on it. You're supposed to be on it for five years. Yeah. She's weaning herself off on it. Um, but let's Is talk she about doing the, the other things though? If she's, I mean, you know, I agree with you. And I know that if we're not doing something, cancer yeah. will spin out of control. So is yeah, she doing because, things in the natural field? Yeah, she's, she has a, a therapeutic doctor who oh, good. actually helps her with, you know, this weaning situation and the naturalist. Mm -hmm you know, lifestyle so that she can do this, you know, because she's 49. So she's in that area where it's perimenopause, you know what I'm saying? So the estrogen is a fool and, you mm -hmm. know, um, but let's talk about the mammogram. I legit have went and had the mammogram today. You know, I, um, I had one in February, literally and, today, literally on today. Um, <laughs> wow, okay. be, and it was just, just so happened that it fell on this day, but, um, I have dense breasts. Mm -hmm. So I, when I had the first, when I had my two mammograms, I always get them abnormal. So I have to go yeah. back because of the dense breast. Um, but you avoided the mammogram because of radiation. Yeah. And it, you know, talk to us about, you know, your mom actually got the mammogram consistently because now years. I'm feeling away, you know, for 30 years and then ended up getting it. Do you feel that it's related to the radiation from the mammogram? So any doctor and anybody with any spit of medicine uh, and medical background can confirm for you that radiation will cause cancer in the human body. So basically cancer is cells refusing to die, right? They, they propagate, they spin out of control, they refuse to die like normal cells are supposed to do. Uh, and that can be triggered by lots of things. DNA damage is one of the biggest things. Radiation damages your DNA. So my thinking and what I still believe is true is that over in my mom's case, 30 years, but however many years prior to that, you know, 10, 20, that much radiation and accumulated in your body over that period of time will cause problems. Here's where my thinking was wrong. The benefits outweigh that risk. The benefit of knowing what's going on in your body so you can do something about it, whatever that is you choose to do, is more important than the little bit of radiation you're gonna get exposed to, right? We get exposed to more radiation flying on airplanes more often than once a month. We get more radiation exposure through running microwaves in our home. So there are things we're already doing that are worse for you than a mammogram. I will say that to this day, I still haven't had a mammogram and I encourage women to do early detection. I don't specifically think mammograms are the only thing to do. Although I think thermo uh, thermography is also a bit of a half measure. It can only show you there's heat coming out of a certain area. It can't show you why. And when you're trying to get early detection and as much information as possible, you need to understand a deeper idea of what's going on in the body. So what I recommend is a 3D ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And that gives you, um, because most black women, including myself, have very dense breast tissue, like you just said, we need something that's gonna look deeper, but not radiate us more, right? So right, right. the 3D ultrasound is not covered by a lot of insurance. Uh, that's the other thing I've learned in this. It's not just um, medical discrimination, it's financial discrimination. Mm. They hate us. Uh. They absolutely hate women. They don't want us to, <laughs> I just, it's outrageous. It's outrageous. Yeah. That should be automatic with the amount automatic. of growing um, can concerned can about other parts, other parts of our body that they want to regulate on. That's oh yeah, that makes it even crazier, you know. Yeah. Okay, and all that really means is that, like, I, I forget who said it, but you have to be your own advocate, Selena. Maybe you said it based on your sister's experience. They aren't supposed to care about you more than you care about you. So us continuing to think they should is our fault. Mm. I know for a fact 
I care about myself more than anybody on this planet ever will. And so it is up to me to make sure I'm getting the information, asking the questions, and circumventing a system that is designed to hurt me, or at least not to be the one who gets helped. You know, Black women's death rates for cancer are still 40%, the same they were 20 years ago. And none of the really amazing mm -hmm. benefits that have happened in the breast uh, cancer world and the technology and the developments of different medicines, none of those have helped Black women. Why? Wow. Because we're not the target audience. We're not who they're there to help. And when some of us get helped, uh, you know, adjunctly, that's great. But I, the first, remember when um, Issa Rae was on the red carpet and they said, who are you rooting for tonight? She said, I'm rooting for all Black people. Okay. Everybody roots for their own people. Let's just be clear about that. Like, I don't want to waste any more time expecting people who aren't going to show up for me to show up. Let me mm -hmm. go to the people who are showing up and help that along, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm trying to, I'm, I'm beating a dead horse. Nothing's going to happen with us trying to beat against the door and saying, look at us, look at us. We have enough money. We have enough intelligence. We have enough people in the medical field who are brown and black that we can turn this situ uh, situation around ourselves. And we're the ones who benefit from doing it. So I'm tired of waiting on other doctors to say, oh, here, let me tell you about this new thing. No, no. I went out and found everything I wanted to do. I went out and, and figured out how to pay for it. And thank God for angels that stepped in and helped me do that because I never would have been able to afford the 16 weeks of uh, integrative treatment I did in Arizona okay. otherwise. And I'm doing the work. Uh, and so I will say to all of you, one in three women will get cancer, which means we're all going to know somebody who's going to deal with this. And it may, God forbid, be us. Right. And this group, hopefully I'm the only one, <laughs> Since it's, oh you know, I'm four or five of us here now. Hopefully it's just me. But what you can do to prevent it is what I like to focus on, because I wish I could go back 10, 15 years and start doing the things I know how to do now. I believe you can reverse anything that happens to your body, but you have to be disciplined. You have to be educated about what to do and you have to be willing to suffer a little bit. Either way, you're going to suffer. I know what your sister went through, Selena, was horrible. Um, I know what Vanessa Bell Calloway, Vivica, went through. I, I saw that from a distance as well. And Lisa Ray, your aunts, and uh, like Claudia, your grandmother, all of us have been touched in some way, some more than ever, others. But what we've seen is that it's not easy. But it's not easy either way. If you're in a healthy body listening to me right now, it's not easy to stay healthy. But it's up to you to do the work because you're going to have to do it one way or the other. Ananda, you, you know, you answered my question because I was going to ask you the importance of women having a yearly mammogram. So, but you are doing exactly what I knew you were going to do. This is what we know you from. You are a talker. Yeah. You are an educator. Yeah. You are a host. This is what you do. This is what we, we grew up watching you as well and inform us. And you mm. do, you're taking over this interview. And, and for me, my hands is up and out because okay. I don't have to ask you anything because <laughs> you know your reasoning for being here. You know that you are a survivor. You know you are strong and you've been openly honest about yes. you not getting a mammogram. And, and, and I'm a hypochondriac, but then I'm a, a, a doctor avoider. Like people can identify and relate to what you're saying because they're hearing you say it and you are a survivor. So I just want to say to you, thank you so much for just being here and being honest and opening up because that's what people need to hear. Just that's my, that's my, it's not a question, but that's what I, I need to say. I mean, right. Thank you. I always wonder why God chose me to run my mouth. I had a speech impediment until I was eight. didn't really talk <laughs> much. And I'm like, okay. oh, what better thing to talk about than something that can save other women's lives? Let's go. It's the that most important thing I've ever talked about in my life. And so I'm, I'm happy to be here and proud to be able to speak to it. And Ananda, you're just dropping so many gems and so much knowledge for uh, the ladies here. You said one thing where you said one in three African-American women will- Women, you know, period. Uh, women, period. Okay, yeah. but why is the mortality rate um, amongst African, African-American women so high? That's what I like to the know. The care why? is so low. Oh. The, the death rate is so high because the care is so low. And also- I don't like blaming other people for, for problems, really, because it doesn't empower you to do anything about it if it's someone else's fault, right? So yes, everybody plays a part in why our numbers are high. But along with that, everybody is us. Yes. We eat worse. We let ourselves be stressed out longer. We participate oh, yeah. in stressful situations for too long. I'm guilty of that myself. I'm guilty of all of this. That's how I ended up here, right? Eating wrong. I'm sorry, cocktails with queens, but, queens, but drinking too much, too. Y'all mostly okay. drinking wine, and that's well, okay. That Alcohol and cancer are closely related. Wait, hold on, Ananda. Did you hear me? I said, does wine count? 
I didn't think wine used to count because I had a okay. wine. Day you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm like, I don't drink hard liquor. Like, you know what I mean? I done got better with that at least. You know, it's some wine. And that's, see, that's that great that's area Jesus we like Jesus to As far as I'm concerned, you know, he's yeah. he's <laughs> for me to stay calm. Okay, it's just fermented great. <laughs> exactly, it's <laughs> part of the four food group. It's the food group. I think. Can I ask this? What ways can we, um, as African American <laughs> women? Do better, like you said, the, our eating, exercising. What ways do you believe besides those two? Uh, yeah. Can we help our body to avoid this deadly disease? Well, eating and exercise, we can't completely avoid because a lot of answers lie in there. And mm -hmm. one, when it comes to eating, is not eating. And you can, I mean, all this is searchable. The information is out there. But while I'm here, let me just tell you, you can go look it up more for yourself. Fasting is so vital for your body. Our ancestors. Really? never had 9,000 calories available for $10 every two miles. It's ridiculous what we put in our bodies oh, now yeah. and how much of it. So even if women who are out there wanting to avoid breast cancer, avoid being unhealthy in general, even if you just started doing an intermittent fast, which means not eating for, I would say a minimum of 12 hours. Some people start with eight. I think 12 is reasonable because eight of it, you've already slept away. So if you don't eat for 12 hours and then you mm -hmm. are able to eat for 12 hours, that's a great way to start. You can work that up to a 16 hour of not eating and an eight hour window of eating. I do a 20 hour of not eating window and a four hour of eating window, which is really extreme, but I'm still trying to get it the rest of this works, out of my body. I lost eight pounds in one week by doing the 16 and, and eight. Yeah. 16, eight. And you didn't even change what you ate, right? You just nope. changed when you ate. Yeah. Claudia, I mean, that's it like you had breakfast and then a late dinner. I mean, I'm just, it's 24 hours in a day. I no, started so at 10 a.m. Claudia, how did you do it? I did. I didn't eat anything till 10 a.m. and I finished. I had a strict cutoff at 6 p.m. You could do that, and then you, you know, oh, yeah, that's and great. drink yeah. water. And I, I, and I, when I went extreme, I went to noon when I was feeling froggy. I lost eight pounds with no exercise wow, in one, and I still ate the nonsense. Mm -hmm. Imagine while you were eating. Now. I it mean, worked. that's a perfect example in and of itself. And what you did, Claudia, was that you allowed your body to at least tiptoe into what is called autophagy, autophagy. I say autophagy because it makes more sense. That is when our bodies are brilliant. They have built-in ways to clean and heal themselves, but we never activate them. Mm -hmm. You activated autophagy. What autophagy is, is the healthy cells who are, you know, nothing's wrong with them. They're trying to do what they need to do, support your body. They need a lot of energy to do that. They'll take that energy from old dead proteins. Tumors mm -hmm. are old dead proteins. Right, essentially. Did you say that? Um, what, fat what you is say? old. Hmm? Aut you autophagy. Uh -huh. No, you said something is old. Is tumors. Well, the healthy cells will eat up the bad stuff, basically. Okay, gotcha. Your body will feed on itself, but not in the way most people think. Most people think, oh, you're going to starve and it's going to eat up your muscle. Your body is too smart to do that to itself. It wants to survive. It's going to eat the stuff it would throw away if it could anyway. Right. So that's one of the things you're really uh, actively activating in your body when you do it. And it's this thing that our ancestors bodies used to do every day. I mean, think about it. They would have to exercise to go get what little bit of food they got. True that. And then they burned that off and wouldn't have any food. And so bodies are used to going two, three. I've done a six day fast. That's the longest I've done. And I'm going for a 21 soon. Not yet, but soon <laughs> working up to it. Um, I'm going to go 21 but, days without eating. I know people who've gone 40 and have literally reversed their cancers. Bless you. Okay. So, listen, I mean, listen, like I said, you're going to have to work either way. You can get exactly. in this and either do all the hard work it takes to go through the conventional way and really upheave your quality of life. And, you know, hopefully it works. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Or you can start to do the work now while you're healthy. Start to do a bit of intermittent fasting. Add things like turmeric to your diet. The studies yeah. behind curcumin, that's the active ingredient, polyphenol in turmeric, that alone, some people have cured cancer with like, and cancer isn't, I mean, cancer is like the biggest, scariest one we talk about, but anything under that rheumatoid arthritis, anything based on inflammation, which is everything, you know, any of that turmeric and curcumin and turmeric will help address. I blend real whole turmeric root every day and put it in some water and toss it back. I mean, there's so many things you can do for your body to maintain health or to get health back when you've lost it. I'm not saying there's no reason to go to doctors. Certainly, I still go to doctors. I like to get a, a roadmap of where I'm at. I need the tests that they provide, but they can't do the work for me. They never can. 
Ananda, we had so many more questions to ask you, but we don't have to because you just freestyled and gave us all the information we needed and more. You also gave us stuff that we didn't even have to ask you, ask you. And I think you are the perfect advocate for this. And I really appreciate you coming here and sharing all this knowledge, your story. You didn't have to do this and you did. Uh, before we let you go, beautiful, my beautiful friend, who I miss. I'm so glad I, I got to you see you. so much. We got to so hang again. We'll invite you to Vegas, but you can't drink. You can only drink water. Okay. So I mean, you know, uh, I do. I do my electrolytes every like sixteen hours. Okay. <laughs> Bring your turmeric water, uh, Ananda. What's what's next for you? Because the people are in love with you. They're so happy to see you tonight Aww. on the show. What is next for you? I, you know, I like I said, I feel like if 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 anyone this was supposed to happen to, because none of us are immune from things happening, and life happens to all of us. But God chose the right one because I'm gonna continue to talk about it. I can get through whatever I need to do. I'm a really strong person spiritually and, and just in general. I have a lot of strength. I still do a lot of carpentry. I still want to build, um, you know, homes for women and children. That's a little further down the road for me because I'm, I'm still working on getting this cancer thing to know evidence of disease, which I will. Um, but I, I became an entrepreneur because of this. It's an expensive route that I've chosen to take. So I was like, let me figure out how to create a better income. And so I have Shop Love Ananda is a shop I sell some pretty cool t-shirts on and I'll be expanding the other stuff. But, you know, I'm a mother first um, and it's been hard enough to maneuver this with my child right next to me watching everything. It's made me a little uh, stronger as well, just to hang in there uh, in, a, in a better looking way through him. But I don't know. I, I'm open to what God is doing with me. And so whatever that means, I'm going to be there. Well, Ananda, beautiful oh, person, beautiful soul, beautiful story. Thank you for sharing your story with us. We wish you the best. Now, for more information on mammograms and examinations, go to www.cancer.org and please support Ananda. Buy those t-shirts, support her business because she is a great person and she deserves all. Anytime we can help you out to promote anything, please let us know. We got you. Thank back. you so much. Take care of yourselves, ladies. Well, You're the only ones yes. who can. I love Thank you all. You. You're so amazing. Keep Thank the show you. up. We'll be right back with more Cocktails with Queens after the break. Welcome back to Cocktails with the Queens. Oh my God, what an amazing segment here on this show. And I think that's why I love doing this show because not only do we spill the tea and have fun and talk about hot topics, but we also have the opportunity to have important segments like this that benefit women, that benefit all of us. And men can get breast cancer as well. I just want to make that, make a point Absolutely. about that. Men can Absolutely. get breast cancer as well. So yeah, Ananda Lewis, please support her. All right, y'all. The Surreal Life brought you some of the craziest celeb moments in television history. And tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central, the first celeb reality social experiment is back on VH1. Now buckle up because this surreal, this season is surrealier than ever as eight unfiltered celebrities from all different walks of life are forced to live under one roof away from the spotlight of Hollywood. Now, these big personalities will step out of their comfort zones and reveal their true selves. You can expect to see uh, Dennis Rodman, August Alsina, Tamar Braxton, Frankie Mena Muez, uh, Manny MUA, CJ Perry, and Stormy Daniels. Ooh, I know she got a lot of Trump tea to spill about the whole mushrooms. Okay, we're going to see all of them who will connect and collide and un in many unexpected ways, leaving reality fans on the edge of their seats. Now, trust me, things are about to get surreally wild. Don't miss the season premiere of The Surreal Life tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern and 8 p.m. Central on VH1. And I am looking forward to this collaboration and mixture of personalities. Check them out. We'll be right back with more Cocktails with Queens when we return. Welcome back to Cocktails with the Queens. All right, ladies, let's get into some hot topics. Travis Scott responded to claims that he's been cheating with his ex-girlfriend, Rojean Carr. Now, Rojean posted a video of Scott in a uh, closed music video set and wrote, I'm directing Ob, like obviously. Now, Travis posted this message on his Instagram story. Okay. A lot of weird bleep going on. An uninvited person was sneaking photos on what was supposed to be a closed set while I was directing a video. He continued, I'm saying this for the last time. I don't know this person. I've never been with this person. So please stop with the continuous cyber games and fictional storytelling. Mm, but wait, there's more. Travis' alleged ex-girlfriend, Rojean Carr, posted a video saying otherwise. Take a look. To say you don't know me and you've never been with me, when you've definitely been with me, when everybody's seen you with me, when I have pictures and videos of you with me. 
Now, I went to uh, a page, and I, the, but she was talking about this, and there were many people that supported her claims, allegedly, and they said, no, nah, we don't see you around. Like, so, supposedly, this girl been around for like 10 years. And I think it's weird that she looks like the exact face that Kylie's been trying to get. <laughs> that's, Ky that's her inspiration. Kylie Jenner wants to look at this girl. Lisa Ray, what you think? They look a lot alike. I just think that it's like almost like with Reggie Bush. You know what I mean? They have a type. You know what I mean? And their type is that way. You know what I mean? But here's the thing, though. You know, when someone, when you say to someone or everyone that I don't know this person and I've never seen this person, that's when you can feel like there could be some receipts out there. And for you to say a bald faced that lie, I'm not saying that he is. But if that's the case, then you know that that's going to come back to haunt you. You know that you've given ammunition to this girl to be able to say, no, no, you know me because here it is right here. And now this story is going to unravel and unfold and it's going to make you look like you were lying and unfaithful. And that, that may not be the truth about unfaithful, but it's definitely going to make you look like you're lying. I don't know why men do that. I had that done before. I don't even know her. Uh, you, you, sir. We have lots of evidence. Like, why would you do that? Like, just admit that you messed up and you've been playing two women against each other instead of us being mad at each other. Vivica, what do you think about this story, this nonsense? Do you believe it? You know, I just, I, I get so sick of these, these, these people, to be very honest with you. <laughs> I, no, no, really, I do. That it's like, they go get the same look as someone that's really famous to then flirt, mess around, DM the guy. It's just so childish. Like, I, it, okay, you got his attention for a second. He's still going to stay with Kylie. You think he's leaving Kylie? I mean, I, I, I hate to say it. I mean, it's like, so what are we supposed to do with this? Hmm? Did you get your little five or 10 seconds of Instagram in the dark? Fame. I mean, you could have lit yourself a little bit better, you know. I'm sorry. I think it's BS, and I could care less, to be honest with you. Okay. The Vivica has spoken. Selena, what you think? <laughs> I got to tell you, <laughs> Vivica <laughs> hit the nail on the head. Legit everything that I feel. I mean, I, I don't mean to shake the table either, but look, girl, like, what, what do you think is going to happen once this comes out. And why are you allowing it to happen is another thing. Maybe there should be some more self-respect for you, for you. You know, you have to focus more on your self-respect. Let him be a fool and whatever he gonna be with his woman, with his baby mama, cause that's who we gonna stay with. You know, you, you, you do the work and, and reverse what has what is happening to you because she has control over how she can deal you know how she has to gravitate you know inside of that situation she don't have to come forward she don't have to say none of that unless there's another reason why she's coming forward that's but what do you think her aim more. is is her aim that's what i'm saying right what is the I'm chasing lisa ray or paper chasing because you know if you tell and then they, they they'll pay you to be quiet in cloud chasing Selena, she thinks that's going to equal some attention, some paper. Some paper. So yeah. what do y'all think I mean, about the fact that supposedly this girl has been around before Kylie and been playing along, and she says his relationship with Kylie is his is his for press and PR relationship. Are we surprised at that? He still ain't going to go nowhere. Mm -hmm. And if so, you was playing along with it for all these years, right. so why are you coming so, out now? What are we supposed What's to do mean? with that? Right. I think we're mad. I'm not mad. I think the wrong person is getting the shade, though. I'm going to go ahead and put it on Travis for what, because you know, y'all, listen, we know how powerful Pillow Talk is. Maybe telling you, be sounding like it makes so much sense. I feel like he's the one in the wrong here by telling this girl whatever lie he told about Kylie, and then he's telling Kylie whatever lie about this girl. And then they mad at each other, and, and where's his accountability? Claudia. Yeah, that's true. Claudia. If you know true. Right? Claudia. How many kids he got with Kylie? Two? I think two. Right. So it can't be too much damn pillow talk that he done made not one, two babies with her. Oh, I hear you. Whatever, it won't whatever, be me, girl, but they out there. Whatever girl copycat ass is doing, she a fool. 
But she said that it's going to be a little what different what type what, of situation. But I just want to know, what we supposed to do with it? Because that's what I want to know. As I said, Kylie ain't going nowhere, and Travis ain't going nowhere. But she going to start some shit, though. That's what it is. And it's, this shit going to be started enough where there's not going to be a relationship there with Kylie and them anymore. Drama. What, what is her drama? Well, that's what I meant by what's her angle. You know right. what I mean? Yes, about chasing and all that. Yes, you know, that's probably why she was barely lit so she can have some more time to say, ah, but this is how I look. I don't know. But uh, you're right. Travis has to take some accountability because he's saying he don't know her at all. So if she come with some receipts saying, huh, yes, you do. Then what? Then he well, going to look stupid. Hey, exactly. ladies. We I, I would have preferred to see them. If you're going to come strong, come with a strong case. Where yes. is your evidence? Okay, Kylie oh, Jr., I don't know which Other one's than that, Claudia, what can we do with it? We well, I, we don't. Yeah, we can't do nothing with it. But um, hey, I'm. I, we will. If there's any updates to the story, we will let y'all know. We're gonna take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back with more cocktails with queens. <laughs> Welcome back to cocktails with the queens. All right, y'all. Listen, I got some great info for y'all. If you have dark spots, it can often feel like a vicious cycle. As soon as one fades, another one pops up. But guess what? You can break the cycle with Clinique, even better, Clinical Dark Spot Interrupter. Now, this powerful serum works on melanin rich to fair skin and helps visibly correct dark spots such as acne marks while protecting from future discoloration. Now, listen, I had a couple dark marks on my skin, and this is a necessary product to help lighten that up and even out the skin tone so you are ready for your bikini, your close-up. All right, now, 94%. Uh, demonstrated an improvement in radiance and visible skin tone, including acne marks in just eight weeks. And you can see a 39% visible reduction in dark spots in 12 weeks. Now, our damage eraser with CL302 Brightening Complex is now more concentrated with booster technology to deliver dramatic brightening results, yet it is still gentle enough for all skin types. It also features our proprietary brightening molecule and vitamin C for a more even looking skin tone, including acne marks. Plus, improves the look of existing dark spots, including age spots, while interrupting the look of future dark spots too. Now, in just two and a half hours, it helps quell redness from irritation that can trigger new visible spots and worsen existing spots. The powerful brightening serum from Melanin Rip to Fair Skin is set to visibly improve uneven skin tone and interrupt the look of future dark spots. Now, what is this product free of? Oil, denatured alcohol, SLS, SLES, sulfates, parabens, uh, phytolates, and fragrance. It's in free, oil-free, non-acneogenic, fast-absorbing serum and developed by a dermatologist. So get even better clinical dark spot interrupter this holiday season, available at Clinique.com. Once again, that is Clinique.com. I know that was a lot of information, y'all, but listen, it is important to get that skin together and keep it looking so good. All right, ladies, uh, let's welcome back to this conversation. This is uh, the part of the show where we uh, will talk about our personal feelings and personal experience and things that got us through life. Welcome to our queendom. Tonight's topic will focus on the question, is it possible for a married woman to still be viewed as being a single mother, even though she's married, because she's the only one solely responsible for raising the children? So she's married, but she's like, I still feel like a single mom because no one's helping me. Now, our topic was inspired by a conversation on the podcast, tonight's conversation cards. Let's take a quick look at the video. But if you can't help your wife or your girl out with the kids and you know she need a break or I saw a video of a girl, mm. I saw a video of a girl breastfeeding and she was dozing off breastfeeding. The, the boyfriend was recording her. Oh, uh, look at you being reckless. Da, 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 da. Why wouldn't you just grab your baby? Yep. Baby, go lay down for a second. You tired. Now I get you. you because she's that. a single, single mom. Uh, ladies, is she a single mom? Selena, let's start with you. Is she a single mom? Um, well, it depends. You, you would have to look deeper into what that situation was. That's just one instance. However, I do believe that you can be a single mom inside of a marriage. Um, I know women, I have friends where their husbands refuse to change pampers, to feed the baby, to do anything that deals with the baby because they feel like they're the head of the household and they bring home the money and pay all the bills. So they feel like they do not want to partake in anything dealing with the child. It's totally and completely backwards, in my opinion. That's not how I run my household. My husband is very hands-on with our kids, thank God. But there are there are marriages that are like that. It's not for me, but they are out there. 
All right. Thank you so much. Uh, I mean, Lisa Wright, what did you think? Same thing. You know, I think that, you know, the word and the phrase single parent comes from you doing it by yourself. So even if you're in a relationship and you're doing it by yourself, then you, you're raising your, your child or the child. Okay. Vivica? What do you well, think? first of all, I think she married to the wrong one. You know, that any, anybody that's clowning and, and, and as you're trying to breastfeed the baby and you're tired and he's not a good partner, she need to go on and keep it moving.com. However, I will say in the dynamics of today with women making more money than some of their partners, some men, uh, women don't have a problem being the financial provider because a dynamic may change and later he gets a job, he starts making more money. So, you know, that's how I feel about that situation. I think uh, you, uh, you're right. She married the wrong person. I think a married woman should never feel like she's alone in raising a baby that they both made by themselves, by with each other. So like that is some ridiculous, that is some nonsense. And I, that's sad that she would feel so lonely. But a lot of people say they have felt lonely, the loneliest in a relationship. If you're not being loved properly, loved on, supported and helped. And I think that's a damn shame. She needs to leave him and make him a single dad if you're going to clown her while she's doing her that's job. Okay. And get well, some child support important. from him. And Yay. breastfeeding makes you sleepy. So he does. That part. Breastfeeding makes you sleepy. Ladies, so that's a fool. We want to thank Ananda Lewis for sharing her amazing story with us and dropping so much knowledge. And stick around for a new episode of Brutally Honest with Jasmine Brand. We'll be back next week. See y'all later.